trôi làm mì dài năm liệu bảy lo mới hào mà rời sinh không rời sinh đâu chả có phụ nào I absolutely love this place and also deep water sailing. This is my passion sport. Tim really loves being out in nature and exploring. That's really inspiring to me, like someone who's that excited about climbing. There's about 3,000 limestone towers surrounding us right now. There really isn't anywhere else like it in the world. From a deep water soloist perspective, it's the ultimate place for doing that type of activity. You're climbing above water and you're not using any ropes, sometimes 60, 70 feet above the waters. It's almost like a science of trying to understand what the limits are, because it is pretty dangerous. I started deep water soloing in the UK back in the late 90s with a small group of people. Not many people did it then, really. It was quite unique. We heard about this guy called Miguel in Mallorca. He said he had this amazing cliff. We developed the whole cave, and that's now probably the best deep water soloing in the world. We've introduced people like Chris Sharma into the sport. We've been trying to find a place that's better than Mallorca. Vietnam has the highest amount of rock that's above water in the world. I came here in 2003, and we've come back with Kyra Condi to go deep water sailing. As far as experience goes, I really don't have a whole lot. Even swimming in the ocean, I don't have too much. I'm not a very good swimmer. <laughs> I'm afraid of water a little bit. I'll be there to save her if she needs it. This is going to be a spirit quest, I reckon. She's less than half my age, and she's really switched on, really psyched, and she's never been deep water sailing outside before. My only other experience is like single book, and it's 55 feet with like 2,000 people watching. The only other times I've deep water solid have been with lifeguards. This isn't a pool. We want really steep. Deep water and yeah, just hard steep. Yeah, really hard water. yeah. We're going to Le Mekong. There's five routes here that are in the top five deep water solos in Vietnam. This is a sweet spot. Sick, was there. All right. Oh, there's a lap, like literally right here. <laughs> <laughs> he's had so much experience climbing here before. Like he's had multiple trips here. He helped develop the area. He's had a ton of experience deep water soloing. Really cool to see someone so fearless. When you start deep water soloing, it doesn't matter who you are. It's really scary. You're climbing a bit high up, and you've got no rope, no harness, like no bouldering mat. You are just up there alone. The more falls you take, the more you realise that it's actually OK. It's like a rite of passage, really, to get to that point. The first couple times, it was mostly trying to get comfortable above water, you know, taking some falls, knowing what to expect when I'm like grabbing the holds, like what type of holds they are, because this is a type of rock that I'm not super familiar with. Can I just jump? Sure. Can I just sit down? It's up to you, mate. I'll jump. Yeah, all right, cool. So when he goes first, it's like I watch him go and he falls in, and I'm like, okay, like it's safe, I can do it. The crux of deep water soloing is that fear management. I'm up high and I'm scared and I'm Whoa. super adrenalized. And then you have to go through the extreme fear moment of like letting go and falling into the water. Nice, Kyra. You got this, mate. I'm so scared. Hey, you're about 20 feet lower than I was. Whoop. Whoop. I took my first like fall instead of a drop. It was cool to like commit to that too up there. Fall 
and then try the same section again. You have to try it and grind up every time. Ground up on site, mate. I mean, look at the smile on my face. I mean, it's really, really fun. It's like a dream come true, to be honest. The brilliant thing about being here is that you are living on the water. You're on this amazing boat. She ends up a master boat driver. He is a master boat driver. His arms are like oars. When you want to go climbing, you go onto a little boat, and the locals call the uh, little rowboat a speedboat. It took us a little while to figure that one out, but it's actually a rowing boat. To reach the first hold is quite often the hardest part. It was literally like going slacklining to try and get the first hold. As soon as you're on the rock, you're on home turf. Get the boat out of the way, and you're in climbing mode. Times you come, there's always places that you haven't seen. We're ready, we're packing the dry bag. For me, Pyramid Cave was like the dream. These lines of tubers going at the left hand side, <laughs> the climbing's so awesome. You're climbing on these stalactites coming from the ceiling and you're stemming between them and you can wrap your legs completely around them. really strange rock, which is really three-dimensional, which she's never climbed on before. You got lots of water, you're not that high, and you got good holds. Of course, you're getting higher up and you can fall in really funky ways and it's just very unusual. You did so well. <laughs> Give me a bump, that was mega. <laughs> Being able to get over that fear and do it was really cool for me. You're definitely like a traditional deep water soloist now, mate. That was so scary. Kyra's vegetarian. She's not going to eat any of those. Crabs, shrimp, manta shrimp. I'm Ooh. slightly horrified. And I'm thinking, well, you know, we can have that for dinner. But the manta shrimp was like, I don't think so. <laughs> so you grab my thumb. There's like a You're razor. So gnarly. I think, um, like, there's at the two end cracks of the crack. at the end of the crack. It's beautiful. We found this really rad climb, Streak of Lightning, and it is super cool. It's perfectly aesthetic. It's totally standalone. It's like one of the harder routes in Vietnam, and I think it only has one ascent. and Tim's like one of the best people to have that from because he's always just so supportive. Nice, Kyra. That definitely made it a lot scary. It's hard to get myself to like really try hard right there, but I think maybe next go. I was able to try really hard and fell because I was trying and not because I'll just let go. And now I have a project. It's like raining and it's windy. Open ocean that we've got to get across. It's going to be really wild. So we're going around the back side, trying to access Hans Island. We might not make it. We've got life jackets, mate. We'll be all right. I'll look after you. <laughs> We're on holiday. <laughs> it's not that bad. There's a little bit of spray. It's a little loud. We're still pretty 
far away. We're at the route Night Rider. Been doing some deep water soloing, so it's a good break from that. The last time I was here was in 2003, and we saw this face from the boat. But as we got closer to the rock, we realized that it was this incredible flowstone. I think it's one of the best sport routes in the world. Knowing that he was the one who put the bolts in it for the first time is like pretty sweet. It's like the sickest route I've ever been on. Really? Oh, I think so. Five minutes until I won't be able to get on the wall. So I reckon I've got maybe one warm up go. Vietnamese deep water solo for breakfast. Get the pinch, get the cheaper, outside left foot, bump to the intermediate, right foot out, and then go over the top. All the way to the jug? Well, the we'll flat see, yeah. we'll see, maybe. Lashing two together. That's what happens when you need a, an extra 20 centimeters. Now or never. <laughs> He wants to do it for sure. We're trying to pass on all this information to her to help her get into this world of deep water surfing outside on this crazy rock. And I really enjoy passing that on to other people so that they can have really cool experiences. It's like 6.30 in the morning. It's like last chance to send.
excited that Kyra got to the top. She deserved that. <laughs> I actually managed to like get up high and like try hard, which makes you feel so good to actually be scared and push through. Normally when you get to like 25 feet, you're like... <laughs> Probably the second person to ever get up to that point. I reckon that's the coolest deep water solo here. I don't see myself as only a comp climber or only a boulderer, but like that's how I think a lot of people see me as. And so it's really important to me to like try a bunch of new things. It takes me back to when I started climbing and those first experiences are the ones that you cherish the most. I'm able to relive those moments through her, but it's also really exciting watching her getting on hard route. Climbers get to experience the culture, eat the food, but then we also get to go and do this really rad sport. Just cool experiences like that that you wouldn't get otherwise. How often do you get to go to Vietnam with the legend of the sport, deep water soloing? Man, that last hold is a glory job. This is, I'm blown away.